In this video we're going to look at how the Gibbs energy varies as a function of pressure and as a function of temperature. So first as a function of pressure, we, remember, we remind ourselves that the Gibbs energy is a function of temperature and pressure. So the differential dg, some small change in g, is minus s dt plus v dp minus entropy times change in temperature plus volume times change in pressure. Okay. So if we want to know how it depends on pressure at constant temperature, so let's say delta T equals zero for whatever process we're considering, then the change in pressure that we're going to, the change in Gibbs energy we're going to get over some change in pressure, delta G, is going to be the integral from some initial pressure to some final pressure of this part here, VDP, because DT is zero. Okay, so we're going to integrate that. So for an ideal gas, we have PV equals nRT, or V equals nRT over P, if we rearrange that. So for an ideal gas, uh, we're going to have, and let's also do this for the molar, the molar Gibbs energy as well. So delta G bar, G bar being the molar Gibbs energy, so that's just going to be delta G divided by number of moles. Okay, so that's going to be, and then we're going to use the molar volume in that case, so that's going to have V bar is just V divided by N, so it's going to be RT over P. Okay, so writing that out below, we're going to have delta G bar for a process is going to be V or V bar is going to be RT over P. R and T do not depend on P, so we can pull them out front in that integral. Integral from P initial to P final of 1 over P integrated with respect to P, so dP over P. That's just going to equal Our delta G bar during changing our delta G bar during uh, changing pressure is just going to be RT. This integral is going to be the natural log of P, so natural log of P final minus P initial, or natural log of PF over PI. LN PF over P initial. So if we have an ideal gas, our molar Gibbs entropy is just going to be a function of the logarithm of the ratio of the initial and final pressures. So gas constant times temperature times natural log of that ratio. And you'll notice that if we calculated the change in entropy as a function of pressure as well, that that is equivalent to what we've got here, that our delta G bar is equal to our delta S bar during this process. And what this means is one way of showing that our enthalpy is not dependent on pressure for an ideal gas. So if you have an ideal gas, the enthalpy is independent of pressure, and the entropy is uh, going to change with pressure uh, in the opposite of this. So that should be minus delta S there, because you have that minus sign in there. Okay, so that's our change with respect to pressure. And then with respect to temperature, what we can see, so by the form of the total differential here, it's fairly straightforward to see that the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure, the other variable, it's going to equal the negative of the entropy. And that's fine, so that's how it changes with temperature. But there's another form of this that we want to look at the temperature dependence of the Gibbs energy, which is going to be the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, which will be very useful to us in looking at things like the temperature dependence of equilibrium constants once we get there a little bit later on. So remember that G can be defined as enthalpy 
minus temperature times entropy. So if we solve this to divide both sides by temperature, just rearrange it, G over T equals H over T minus S. Now let's take this quantity here, G over T, and let's differentiate that with respect to temperature. So we're going to have D G over T dt and this is at constant pressure so that we're not changing this other part now we're looking at this side this is going to equal well we have we can either look at that as a product or a quotient rule I prefer to look at that as h times 1 over t so we need to do product rule for the derivative of h times 1 over t so first term we're going to get is derivative of 1 over t times h so we're going to get derivative of 1 over t with respect to t is minus 1 over t squared. So it's going to be minus h over t squared, keeping the h there. Then for the other term, we're going to get the derivative of h with respect to t at constant 1 over t. So it's going to be plus 1 over t dh dt at constant p. And then we're going to subtract a ds dt at constant p there for that minus s term. ds dt at constant p. Okay, and from previous videos on the third law of thermodynamics, we know that the derivative of entropy with respect to temperature at constant pressure is just the constant pressure heat capacity divided by temperature. And we also know that Cp of t is defined as the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. So this term up here is 1 over t times the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. So these two terms up here, this 1 over plus 1 over t dh dt, and this is minus 1 over t dh dt. So these terms are equal and opposite, and they cancel out. So what we're left with is our final result, which is the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, which is that dg over t dt at constant pressure equals minus enthalpy over t squared. And if you want to change this to the macroscopic case, we can do that. That's just d delta g over t dt at a constant pressure equals minus delta h over t squared. Okay, so this is the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. It's not very useful to us right now. It just tells us how the, how the ratio of Gibbs energy to temperature changes as a function of temperature as the minus enthalpy divided by temperature squared. But later on, this is going to be very useful to us in deriving the temperature dependence of equilibrium constants and finding some equations that we might have seen in general chemistry and seeing how those apply usefully towards chemical equilibrium.